Hey guys, I have all kinds of seeds to share with you today. I have a seed haul from both Baker Creek and from Johnny Seeds. I've got veggies in here, herbs, flowers, all kinds of stuff. And I wanna share with you what I got. I'm gonna start with Baker Creek because they have these lovely pictures on the cover and kind of move in order of when I would start it, when the season is, and do veggies together, flowers together, that kind of stuff. So that I'm not just throwing random things at you. First up, I have three different kinds of onion seeds. So I bought this Ishikura, I think that's how you pronounce it. I could be wrong. <laughs> green onion from Baker Creek. I've grown this before. It's a really solid green onion. I grow it every year and I was just out of seeds. So I purchased this one again. Can't wait to grow it. Then I have this Texas Early Onion. It's a good short day, just normal yellow onion, but I can't wait to grow. I actually have a couple packets of these because the first year I was here, I accidentally grew long day onions, which is not meant for where I am. And then this last year I planted them in some unwise spots. So I didn't have any onion harvest last year and I'm determined to have a great one this year. I'm also gonna try this round tropea onion. I have not bought this seed before. I'm just experimenting with this red onion. I've noticed that on Baker Creek, most of their varieties are long day or intermediate. I could probably get away with an intermediate variety um, and that might actually be what some of these are, but I, I definitely can't do a long day. I've done that. I know that they only get about this big and so I, <laughs> I'm gonna try to grow up what will actually work well for my space. So haven't tried this before, but I am excited to see what happens with it. I also got a few varieties of carrots. I haven't had great luck with carrots in the gardens that I've had here, but I've also decided that I've been planting them at not an ideal time. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my entire approach to planting carrots this year. And I got varieties that should be a little more forgiving. So there's a coral carrot, which I've never successfully harvested before, but I have bought the seeds and this new Corota carrot. Again, I've bought these seeds, but I just haven't been smart about how I've planted it. And then the third variety that I have here, this is my favorite. It's called Kyoto Red. I harvested these in Colorado. They were amazing. I haven't, again, been able to grow them well here, but I got two packets to hedge my bets and see if I can do them justice this year. This last gardening season, I decided that I want to shift away from growing more head lettuce and shift into growing more spring mixes and baby greens because in my opinion, they resist going bitter a little bit longer. And I think I can get a more reasonable harvest. They, you know, it's cut and come again. So I, from the same plants, I can get a little bit more food. So I'm gonna try this Rocky Top lettuce blend that I've seen on Baker Creek before. They say it's super popular for them. I've just never tried it and I'm excited to. It sounds like in here they have a few rarer varieties of lettuce that they don't necessarily make available as head lettuces. So you can also grow this blend as head lettuces if you just space them farther apart. The only difference is how closely you plant them together. I did also get this Linux lettuce with the intent to plant it as a head lettuce because this is the variety that resisted going bitter the longest for me. I know that I can carry this further into summer and eat off of it without it going bitter than any of the other salad varieties that I've tried. Two other seed packets that I have in this sort of early spring pile is a celery, it's called Chinese White. I have not grown this before. I've done the Chinese Pink Celery and I've done the, uh, I forget what it's called. I'm gonna pronounce it wrong, but Delne, Delne Celery. <laughs> That's what I've grown before and I just kind of wanna try this out. It says that it's delicate and delicious, so I'm hoping that they're right. And then I have some rapini. I've had terrible luck growing broccoli. And so I'm looking for a variety that I can plant maybe more of that will mature faster than a full head of broccoli would take. And I think the rapini might be my answer. For me, the spring and fall garden is just a challenge. If I plant it in the spring and I make sure that it doesn't freeze, then it takes too long into the warm season and it gets bitter. And if I plant it in the fall, 
the chickens and or the sheep tend to get into that fall garden. And so <laughs> I'm gonna plant it in a totally different spot. I'm going to try to grow a lot more broccolini and rapini varieties more so than giant head broccoli varieties. And we'll see if that gives me better luck. Moving on to more midsummer varieties, I have this seed packet of Kalima beans. Kalima beans from Baker Creek and Cantare beans from Baker Creek are by far my favorites, but Kalima seems to be much more productive than the Cantare variety, and so I went ahead and bought a seed packet. The seeds that I had saved from the previous garden season were, some of them were cross-pollinated, and so I just wanted to get another seed packet from Baker Creek and make sure that it was the variety that I wanted because if I'm gonna invest the time and the patience in growing these plants, I definitely want it to be what I want it to be. And I only have bought one seed packet of summer squash this year. That is this yellow scallop squash. They call it the Pattison Golden Marb Scallop. And it's one of my favorites. This and the white scallop are usually some of the squash that are available the earliest and because their fruits are a little tinier they give me more produce more frequently even though the fruits themselves are smaller so I find that to be easier to keep up with as I'm harvesting the garden and trying to eat the produce that's coming from it instead of getting the larger fruits like I would from the white zucchini or things like that but I also do have a stockpile of all of the rest of my summer squash and so that was the only one that I really needed to restock on. And then I also have a handful of some winter squashes and pumpkins. I got a butternut waltham squash from Baker Creek. I think butternut squash is a really easy plant to grow to have food that's storable into winter without needing to be canned or frozen or dehydrated. I can just stick it on a shelf and not worry about it. I grew a bunch of butternut squash this last year and I absolutely loved the harvest that I got from it. So I'm gonna try to do that again. I also got these honey nut squash, which are basically just a tiny butternut. Uh, they're very, very tasty. The point of that variety is that it has the taste of a butternut, but that it's concentrated into a smaller fruit. I love those. I think as long as I can find the seed for those, I will always keep them in the seed stash, and it was just time to restock on that one. I also got this New England Pie Pumpkin Seed Packet. I have this seed packet in my repertoire, but it's about three years old now, and so I noticed the germination rate really went down on these, and it was just, it was time to get some fresher seeds in my seed stock to pull from for the next couple years. And I use that variety specifically for pumpkin pie. That's what it's meant for, that's what it's great for, and that's what I use it for. Now on to the really heat-loving stuff, peppers. I have a decent stash of some other peppers, so I only restocked on things that I ran out of seeds for or varieties that I know don't do well germinating with a seed packet that's older than a year. So I got Jimmy Nardello. I love this as a seasoning pepper. It's amazing. I love to dry it and keep it in my cabinet and throw it in food over the fall, winter, spring until I can harvest more peppers. As long as I can find the seeds, I'll always have that. And then Corbacci as well. This one also doesn't do well germinating older seeds from, and so I just bought a new seed packet because I did not get around to saving seeds from this or from the Jimmy Nardello last year. And then these Poblano peppers. I really like to keep these around because I don't grow bell peppers. I just find it challenging to do in my soil. My soil doesn't support really huge pepper plants. And so the poblano is a slightly smaller fruit. I like to keep it around to have sort of a green pepper taste to things. I also dehydrate this and keep it in my spice cabinet to use when the garden is not in production. Baker Creek also threw in a few free vegetable seed varieties for the orders that I placed. So one is a very hot pepper. De teal? De teal? I don't know. I probably won't grow that. I'll probably give that away to a friend who does appreciate hot peppers because it's just not in my palate. <laughs> That's okay. 
They also gave me this spoon tomato variety. These are really, really tiny. If I'm not mistaken, I think this is actually very important for tomato breeding, but they're so tiny that it's honestly not worth it for me to plant to harvest because they're like, they're like this big. Um, so again, I'll probably give that to a friend or do some sort of seed exchange with that one. And then the third one that I got is Genovese basil. This is my favorite basil and I have a stash of it. I didn't need to buy more just yet, but I am not at all complaining about having <laughs> some newer Genovese basil seeds. I'll use that for sure. Moving away from the vegetables into flowers, I got a couple flowers to put in the garden. So there's this nasturtium Alaska mix. I got this one because it has so many different pretty colors and the leaves are variegated on this one. I don't usually eat nasturtium, but I do plant it along with marigold pretty much throughout the garden as a companion plant. I really think it helps nasturtium act more as a trap crop, especially for aphids and marigolds act more like a deterrent because insects and deer and things like that don't appreciate the smell of it. But I didn't need to buy <laughs> marigold seeds because I have plenty of them, but I did need to restock on nasturtium. So there you go. I also got this mammoth gray sunflower. I've bought these the last few years. I really, really like them. They're fun to have because it's a giant sunflower. It just makes you happy when you see it, but also they're great for seed production. I tend to feed them to the chickens. I don't so much hang them and dry them and harvest them for myself, but I, I definitely appreciate this variety. I will continue to buy these. Now into the flower varieties that I more so just have for fun, less for food. I got this pansy mix. This one is called the Celestial Blue. Pansies are technically edible, but they don't add significant uh, volume to any of my meals, but they are fun in a salad if you want to do that. But it's also just something that will bloom earlier in the spring and sort of satisfy my garden addiction when most things just aren't ready yet. And this Echinacea Paradiso mix. I love this mix. I think it's hard to find Echinacea flowers that are not just the typical purple coneflower. And so this mix is really, really beautiful. There's, there's a whole variety of colors in here. There's white, there's red, there's light pink, there's purple, there's dark pink. There's all kinds of stuff. And I've gotten this before and just didn't do the seeds justice. And so I know in my garden right now, I have purple coneflower and I have some white echinacea, but I don't have any of the fun colors in between. So I'm hoping to get these started next year for flowers the following year. And then this is one of my favorite flowers. And Baker Creek is one of the only places that I've been able to find this seed. It's Black Cosmo. It's also called a chocolate Cosmo because it kind of smells like chocolate. And the reason that it's so hard to find the seeds is that they're typically not viable seeds. You typically have to uh, plant it through a rootstock. And so to find a place that has seeds and has them in stock is a real challenge. Um, I snagged them at the beginning of the year. I don't know if they still have these, but I bought five packets and each one has, you know, maybe four or five seeds. So hopefully that means that I'll have a handful of black cosmos in my flower garden next year. And then I only got a couple of herb seeds. I have a stockpile, so I didn't really need to stock up on anything other than something new that I didn't have yet, which is what this marshmallow is. It's more of a medicinal herb. And this broadleaf sage, I found last year when I was trying to start sage plants that the seed packet I had just didn't have a great germination rate anymore because the seeds were a little older. So even though I have a seed packet of this, I restocked just to get some new fresh seeds in there that would have a better germination rate so I could get some sage in my garden. That's the end of my Baker Creek seed stash, but I have a whole box from Johnny Seeds. So let's dig into this. With a few exceptions, I tend to buy my vegetable seeds from Baker Creek and my flower seeds from Johnny's. I just find that Baker Creek has more varieties of heirloom vegetables, which is what I like to grow. And Johnny's has a larger variety of flower seeds for cut flowers. And they're a little more economical on the price point 
for flower seeds and anything that I tend to buy in bulk. So I also do buy my grains from there. I just didn't need to buy any corn seeds or wheat seeds or anything like that this year. So I didn't order those from, from Johnny's this go around. I probably will next year. So let me just quickly show you the three vegetable seeds that I did get from Johnny's. I have this Imperial Star Artichoke. I think I was really determined to get more artichoke seeds this year because I picked up some from a nursery. I don't know where that seed packet went. It's somewhere around here. <laughs> and then I got these forgetting that I had gotten that other seed packet and then I have a packet from Baker Creek that I got last year. So I have plenty of artichoke seeds <laughs> to go around. <laughs> I also got this lettuce mix. Again, I find Johnny's to be a little more economical on seeds when I can get them there. I'm, again, switching to more of like a baby greens kind of thing. And so I'm gonna try the Baker Creek mix. I'm gonna try this mix and see which one I like better. I also got a fun pumpkin variety. I do not remember what on earth this looks like, but it's Marina di Chioggia. So whatever that is. <laughs> I really wanted to get it. <laughs> okay, on to the flowers. I'm excited. This year, I really took the opportunity to stock up on flower varieties. So last year, I went really crazy stocking up on my vegetable seed varieties, and this year, I went pretty crazy stocking up on my flower seed varieties. I got four different kinds of digitalis, which is foxglove. There's a Dalmatian peach, a Camelot cream, cafe cream, and... Pam's Choice. I did grow Digitalis this year and I was under the impression that they would be first year blooming but only one of them was. I did get a pink foxglove to bloom for me and so this next year I'm going to try to overwinter some of the other varieties that I planted in 2023 and see if I can get flowers in 2024. But I really love foxgloves. I think they're absolutely beautiful and I want to plant more obviously. I also got several varieties of Lysianthus. Lysianthus is something that was new to me last year. I absolutely love it. It looks like a rose. I'm not really a rose person. I think they're actually prettier than a rose, but I can't describe what it is. It's just they make every single bouquet or cut flower arrangement look a little more elevated. I I love them. As long as I can find seed for them, I will absolutely grow it. I have noticed that with Lysianthus seed, they don't germinate great on the second year. I'm not sure if that's the flower in general or the seeds that I tend to get from Johnny's, but I have a Voyage 2 Light Apricot, a Voyage 2 Lavender, Voyage 2 Pink, a Roseanne Brown, which not everyone loves, but I really do. It's kind of like a dark purple brown. I think it's pretty. A Voyage 2 Green and a Corelli 3 Light Pink. So the Voyage 2 or Corelli or Roseanne just refers to the line of Lysianthus. It kind of dictates how the flower itself looks and then they have different color variations within each of them. I really like the Voyage 2, how that looks. It's not too frilly, it's not too compact. I just think it's a really beautiful flower, so I got a lot of those. I also tried Dianthus, which is carnation, for the first time last year. I really enjoyed it. I didn't get it planted out when I should have, but it, it still bloomed and it was still pretty, so I'm gonna try this sweet white uh, Dianthus and see how that does for me this year. And if you're not aware, part of the reason that I'm stocking up on all of these flower seeds is because I am in the process of turning my entire front yard <laughs> right out this window into a flower garden. And so that's why <laughs> I am kind of going crazy on all these flower varieties. Last year, I just didn't have the place to plant it all. I had my vegetable garden, but that space is maxed out. And so I just needed more space before I could really start to grow the volume of flowers that I'm interested in. I got another pansy variety, which are also called viola. So this is one of the Antique Shades F1 Hybrid Viola. I think this is kind of like a peachy mauve. And then the other variety I got from Baker Creek is a blue. So I think those will go really well together. I also have a mix of sweet peas. So there's a few different varieties in here, a few different colors. And I want to experiment with actually getting these planted out in time. I have grown 
flower variety sweet peas, which are fundamentally different from sugar snap peas or something that you would grow in spring. These are actually poisonous. Don't eat these, but they are very pretty. And I want to work on figuring out how to cultivate those better for cut flowers. I also have four different kinds of snapdragons. I actually love snapdragons and before I grew them I didn't realize that they would go throughout the season. So they do like the cooler weather but they will continue to bloom into summer especially if you pinch them. I have a Potomac Apple Blossom, a Rocket Mix, a Potomac Red, and an Early Bronze. So there's a few different colors in here. I would really love to get a row of snapdragons planted out see if I can be on top of it enough to pinch them back so that they produce more and cut off of these all season. And then also a couple more spring flowers. I got two different packets of the Champagne Bubbles Hybrid Poppy. I've grown some Baker Creek poppies so far, but I haven't grown sort of like the typical cut flower Icelandic poppy flowers before and so I'm gonna experiment with these and I definitely need to get these into the fridge to stratify for a couple months before I try to plant them out so I'm gonna set these aside. Moving into some of the warmer season flowers I have a few different varieties of aster. This was new to me. I really really liked the aster flowers that I got last year. I didn't put them in the best spot so they didn't get big uh, but I have a better spot for them this year. And so I got the Valkyrie Brunhild Chamois, the Tower Chamois, and the Lady Coral Lavender. It's kind of hard to find a purple flower that doesn't look dyed or gimmicky or whatever. This Lady Purple Lavender Aster, I really enjoyed throwing those into pastel bouquets because it's something you don't see all the time and it just gives an added level of dimension. I also got a yarrow. I have a packet of white yarrow seeds already, but this is a favorite berries OG <laughs> yarrow mix. So it's just a different color variety. Yarrow is great for cut flowers and it's great as a medicinal herb, so I will probably use that for both. And then I just did a restock on the Selway White Celosia. I have already a packet left over from last year of Flamingo Feather Pink Celosia, and this Selway White, even though it says it's white, it's honestly more green. I, I really like it. In bouquets, it looks a little bit more like greenery than it does necessarily a flower, but it's great filler. It's great to add in bouquets. I really appreciated having it, and I definitely want to grow it again. I noticed a decrease in the germination rate of some of my Scabiosa seeds last year, so I did a restock. This one is just a mix. It's called the Pincushion Formula Mix Scabiosa. Scabiosa is also called Pincushion Flower, so that's kind of where that comes from. And this has white, it has cream, it has red, purple, maroon, all kinds of different colors in here. So I got this to just have, you know, a variety of different Scabiosa colors. And then I also got this Fema White, which is a little frillier than the typical scabiosa. It just has a little bit more, I don't know, interest to the actual flower. I saw this and I had been unable to get it previously, so I went ahead and got it this time around. I also expanded my repertoire of amaranth seeds. I got Hot Biscuits Amaranth, which is kind of like a goldeny orange color, and Coral Fountain. This is one of the weeping amaranths, and then the Hot Biscuits is an upright amaranth. They're a little bit different. I love both of them. I loved the amaranth that I grew this year and I want to grow even more. I did also restock on several varieties of zinnia. I think some of these I've grown before and then some of these are new to me. So there's the Oklahoma salmon, there's the Zinderella peach, there's the Queenie lemon peach. Those are all new varieties to me. And then I did restock on the Queenie red lime. I grew this last year, loved it, and I'm definitely gonna grow it again. I also got a big variety pack of sunflowers. This is called the Summer Breeze Mix. This is sunflowers that are specifically meant for cut flowers. And it was an economical way to get a few different varieties that would look you know, different and interesting in a bouquet together. I think there's, yeah, 500 seeds in here. This is much bigger than a typical seed packet. <laughs> Way thicker. <laughs> and then I also got a Sahara Rudbeckia. I've grown this, yeah, I grew this 2023 season. 
I only had a couple plants that survived. I prioritized my vegetables and the flower seeds that I started that I didn't have time or space for, kind of took the back seat. <laughs> but I did grow this a little bit last year and I absolutely want to grow it again. This next pile is filler flowers and greenery. I have a couple kinds of eucalyptus, which I'm actually going to set aside to start <laughs> in the next week or so. I have a baby blue bouquet eucalyptus and a silver dollar eucalyptus. I really like having different kinds of eucalyptus in the same bouquet because I think it just gives, gives it more dimension, gives it more texture, it makes it more fun. It's a little flat to me if there's only one variety of eucalyptus in there. And eucalyptus seeds can be hard to find, so I, I saw both of those available and I grabbed both of them. I also have a couple different kinds of oryngium. There's a blue glitter and a white glitter. Obviously, the blue glitter is blue and the white glitter is white. <laughs> This is also called Sea Holly, and this might take more than a year to flower. I'm not entirely sure. It's definitely a perennial, so I'll get that started. I don't really know if I'll get anything off of it in 2024, though. As I was making bouquets this last year, I grew to really appreciate ornamental grasses, and so I made sure to grab a few different varieties of those this year, Johnny stocks those specifically for cut flowers and bouquets. So I got a feather top a frosted explosion and greater quaking grass. So this is, looks kind of like sea oats almost. And the explosion grass looks kind of like a, <laughs> the grass version of a firework. And then feather top is just fluffy, frilly. It adds, again, a nice layer of dimension to whatever you're putting together. Okay, this one was the most difficult seed for me to find this year. And I got a little nervous that I wasn't gonna be able to find it, so I saved like <laughs> eight seeds what I could salvage from my plants last year, but Bells of Ireland. I grew this for the first time last year. I absolutely love it in bouquets. It can be tricky to germinate just because it takes a really long time and it can be tricky to grow just because it doesn't love warm weather, but it's totally worth it. And I got a quarter ounce, which is, you can't really tell because all these seed packets are really tiny, but there's a lot of seeds in here. Most of these seed packets are filled to like here because seeds are tiny and this is filled to here. So <laughs> I've got a stash if I can't find them next year either. And then these last three are just some kind of random varieties that I found that I want to try out. There's this white finch orlea, which is a frilly-ish white flower. It's a clustered head of a few different white flowers and never grown that before. I've heard great things. I'm going to try it out. There's also this kiwi blue syrinth. I don't even know how to pronounce that, but I found it in the greenery section of Johnny Seeds. It looks like a cool piece of filler that is not typical in bouquets, and so it's an interest factor, and maybe I'll love it. Who knows? And then also Persian Crest. I've wanted to try this. It's just never been a priority seed for me, and now that I have the space, I finally went ahead and bought it. I know some people absolutely love this as filler in their bouquets, the seed pods are typically what you throw in there. It's not the leaves. And yeah, they're just fun. That was almost a hundred seed packets. I kind of can't believe that I went through it that quickly, but I got less this year than I have in previous years just because I am slowly building my seed stock and I'm not having to buy as many anymore, which is awesome. And I'm really, really hoping that this 2024 season, I can be a little bit better about saving seed. That's a huge reason that I get these heirloom seeds, especially the vegetables. The flowers are not so much heirloom. I don't pay as much attention to that. But especially for the food garden, I'm really looking to reduce costs there. And so even though these videos are fun to make, <laughs> I'm hoping that I won't have as many veggie seeds to go through in the seed haul for 2025. We'll see. I'm also curious if you all would be interested in me diving into my garden planning process and looking at a more comprehensive view of my seed collection itself, not just the new seeds that I got for this year. So if you would be interested in that, please let me know down below. If you have any questions about any of this, also definitely leave those down below as well. And I'll see you next time.